everyone, welcome back to another episode of Super Cool Radio. I'm your host as always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in to a very special edition of Super Cool Radio. This is not an interview for this episode. Instead, we have a great album review coming up. And of course, someone who uh, can help me out with some great album reviews. He is the guru of hair metal and the host of the Crash Course Metal Show on YouTube. Please welcome Trevor Crash Knight. What is going on, Matthew? Thank you, brother, for having me on again. It's been a while now since I since About a year. you were either on my show or your show. I was on your show. Can't remember, but it's been a little while, but I'm glad I'm back. Thank you for having me, man. Of course, dude. I know it's been a while. Always a pleasure chatting with you about all things music, especially with uh, album reviews, man. Uh, but I appreciate it, man. Uh, anytime, man. Let me know. Give me a call or a text or whatever. Always here to help, you know, help. That's what we like to do on my channel and also your channel. Like, we like to promote the un forgotten and unknown, like, bands and albums and just of the metal genre. And slightly punk as well like like you like to venture into as well but that that's you know i think that's what we enjoy doing and that's why we do this oh yeah exactly we, we do it for the love of music and you know um you know similar genre stuff yeah as, as you mentioned I, I lean a little bit more punk but um mm -hmm. but yeah dude it's for the love of music for for the bands that you know deserve uh more eyes on them because they're just really awesome right 100 percent all right, so now as we're diving into, so actually, I, have to, I probably should mention what we're reviewing. I haven't done that yet. This is Weathered and Torn by Images of Eden. He's got the CD of it. It was released back in, uh, for my research, 2022. Is that correct? Yep, you are 100% correct. Good. I say I do my research. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, before we dive into the tracks, Let's discuss the cover art. Crash, would you like to go first? Yeah. Uh, the, now the cover cover artwork. Uh, I remember when this first came out. So like I've just a little bit of backstory for with me and, and Images of Eden. I came across Images of Eden through Gordon Titsworth, the lead singer, vocalist. Uh, I believe he was on your show, correct? You interviewed him? Yeah, I've interviewed them. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, he actually lives like a couple minutes away from me. So like I've seen him sing in tribute bands and stuff like that, like Iron Maiden, Maiden America. And uh, I did not know, for the first couple times I met him, I didn't know he had his own band. And he had he had Images of Eden for 24 plus years now, since the first album came out. And now, certainly, which leads me to say this, the album artwork on all of these albums that he has. Uh, so there's actually six total releases that they have. And like, as you can see, this is two albums ago, soul rise and then angel born uh, was the previous album to this weathered and torn. And it's, they're all very good art to where you can listen to the album and kind of get lost in the artwork too. Like what all of us metal fans love, like, like you, you love putting on the vinyl or the CD and just kind of like looking at the artwork and the credits and all that stuff. Like it's just, I think they did a one, a, a, a very good job of it. There's always something to look for on, there's always some kind of meaning too in their artwork. It seems like, Gordon has never told me that personally, but I feel just the way he thinks and puts stuff in the lyrics of the songs and stuff like that, that there is more to the artwork than just, oh, hey, this just looks cool, you know, and, which it does, but there's more to it than meets the eye, especially when you listen to the album. But yeah, I I, I like the album. Now, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, so this kind of looks like a Nazgul to me. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of dig it just based on that. But I mean, I even like, the logo they kept this this has been their logo for a while now 
and it's just really good. Uh, I think it catches the eye. The artwork catches the eye, and I think I think they uh, certainly passable. It's certainly a home run, I would say, for the artwork for this album. I definitely agree. Uh, I I like it because it looks like like museum quality. Like you can see that thing like hanging in a museum. You know, I right. love the details, the color choice. Mm -hmm. uh, it just to me looks amazing. And again, I do think there is a like some type of hidden meaning or deeper meaning in there because just judging by the music in this in this EP, that there um, there's a lot of different meanings in there uh, for the music. I assume the same for the cover art. And I do like their their uh, logo. It's a great logo. And I really like there's like a sun ray and the O of of that's yes. in there. I really like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It, like I said, Gordon's pretty smart. Like he's pretty articulate in what he's trying to portray to someone without telling them exactly what to think. And that's always – he. even when the times I talked to him and interviewed him and stuff like that, he kind of always mentions that. But kind of – most people don't – think of that at the same time he's not preachy you know although like when you're listening to the lyrics you're like oh okay i kind of i i feel like i know what he's trying to tell me here but then again that's what music should be at the same time is every one person has their own personal connection to each song and each band and not one not two people are going to look at the same song the same way and which is pretty cool and uh image of Ian, i think both uh helps bolster that argument for music Oh, exactly. And I, I like that they keep it open ended as well. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of up to the listener. Like there, there, you can draw some, you know, pretty objective conclusions in their music, but there right. are some things that like you can, uh, there's some subjective things I should say that mm -hmm. you, anyone, like you can list two people can listen to it and they both could have two different opinions on it. And that's, that's what I like about it that like people can draw their own conclusions and have their own connection to the songs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they, those songs are usually always the most, uh, may, maybe not the most mainstream or most popular, but I think when the fan or the listener connects with that, it, it's a it's a way more of a tighter bond between them and the song and them and the band too. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't couldn't say any better with that, uh, but. Do you think we should uh should dive into the you know, instead of giving some general terms? Let's dive into this. Let's do it. Yeah. So right. what what we got here first here is uh, Count to Zero, correct? And that's correct. Now, I will say, Count to Zero. When I first heard this, I was like, "Holy hell, this is pretty heavy." Now, yes, Image of of Eden is kind of, I guess, if you want to compare them to a band, Gordon has the vocals of say a modern bruce dickinson from iron maiden he kind of has that but he also has his own feel to it uh to his vocal delivery as well but uh as far as the band goes i would say kind of a cross between a little bit of power metal and a some progressive metal as well i think those are the two biggest influences i would say uh also maybe like a traditional metal type feel as well but uh, yeah, when Count to Zero comes on, though, this was the single, and they also had a music video for this as well. When this came on, I'm like, okay, so we are definitely going in a heavier direction. Now, the stuff on, there was some stuff on Soul Rise and Angel, Angel Born, the two albums that uh, came out previous to this EP, uh, that were heavy. The, that would probably fit on, on this EP. But generally speaking, there was more uh melodicness in the choruses and such like that but this here weather and torn is just like in your face like almost the whole time the whole five songs is pretty much like they're trying to get some aggression out uh if you will and but count to zero another one of these songs here with lyrics and the lyrical content kind of gordon telling you hey go do this go do your dream yesterday that don't don't wait don't think about it no more just do what you want to do uh, dream wise and stop thinking about it and you know don't look back and it, that's what i think of certainly when i think of this song count to zero that kind of means like hey go do it right now don't wait any longer and uh but even the video the music video pretty good uh uh i guess pretty good idea behind the video because they're all playing around like clocks playing on clocks and 
you know, stuff like that. So that kind of gives you that idea as well. But no, uh, Matt, now I know uh, you aren't too familiar with the rest of the catalog of Images of Eden. Now, when you listen to this EP, EP like the first track here, Count to Zero, what was kind of like your initial reaction? All right, so, well, well I, I've heard this uh, EP before, like when I was preparing to interview with Gordon, right. but um, definitely, you know, um, hard, you know, hard rock, you know, metal, like kind of, you know, kind of on that borderline of it could go either way with that. But mm -hmm. um, I, I liked it. Definitely uh, a heavier start, you know, especially with Count to Zero. They jump right into it, mm -hmm. uh, which I really enjoy. And I can kind of at least add some context to why this. Uh, album itself feels a little bit more aggressive uh so when i interviewed gord i'm not sure if you're oh, familiar with this but um he said that he he wanted to it had more aggressive edge to it uh because this was written during like the you know the pandemic right. so that's why he's kind of getting getting a little bit of frustrations and things like that out with this uh ep mm -hmm. yeah and i th i do remember him talking about that and also i think like with angel born they really kind of were going back and forth between a melodic sound on half of the songs and then also that heaviness, like what you hear here to an extent. And they were kind of also, I believe Gorham was saying, like they were kind of being told somewhat like, hey, try to do a little bit more heavy, say on the heavier side of things. I don't know if that was the label or what or just what they wanted to do. Not 100 percent sure as far as that goes, but. When you listen to the CP, I think that's one of the negatives to it, though, is that of all the five songs, there's only one slower melodic song, and the rest are like in your face for the most part all the whole way through. Now, nothing wrong with that, but me being familiar with the rest of their work, especially the last two albums, I would say that they're kind of being fast and heavy just to be fast and heavy. There's no real, you kind of lost uh, Gordon's personality and emotion in some of these songs because it's so fast. And he, and he portrays all, all five, all four albums that came before this, there was uh, personality and emotion in Gordon's vocals, especially in the slower to mid tempo stuff. And I think this EP kind of gets lost. It, it, he kind of gets lost in it. Uh, but, like I said, some people really enjoy it, which I still enjoy it for what it is. But I think, you know, the, it's it's a missing – it's a little bit of a missing piece for Images of Eden when it comes to the EP here. Uh, just because it's so fast and heavy just to say, hey, we're fast and heavy here now. But Count to Zero, though, nonetheless, a, a classic Images of Eden song that would fit anywhere in the catalog on any of the albums. But, yeah, I, I do dig Count to Zero, though, for the most part. Oh, I do too. I think it's. I think it's one. I think it's the strongest song, in my opinion, off the uh, EP. That's why I'm glad that it was a single and a music video because I think it's probably the best one on there. At least again, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree with what you're saying because I kind of picked up on that when I was listening to the EP last night. That um, a lot. It, it kind of a couple of songs kind of started the same, kind of have like similar rhythm and style to it, which again is fine, but being at least a little bit familiar with their work. I was like, I know they, they have more to them. And I yeah. do think, unfortunately, at some parts, I don't know if this is like on production or something, but it does seem like Gordon's vocals get a little bit lost in yeah. the just sound of music and in just that wall of music of being heavy. I think his vocals get a little bit lost and he is phenomenal. You know, he has a great range. He can do clean. He can do like, you know, he got a little bit more aggressive growling vocals in their later songs. He's got a great range. I like his style of, you know, his vocal style. And I, I unfortunately, I think that got a little bit lost in the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I'm glad uh, you picked up on that too, because I, I even when I talked to Gordon, I kind of mentioned that to him. Cause like I see him live, I seen him live probably at least 10 times between his tribute stuff and also Images of Eden. Great live. The band's great live as well. Uh, and it's just kind of like you said, it gets lost a little bit uh, in the mix somewhere sometimes. But uh, but nonetheless, though, let's. Do uh, you have anything for Survivor's Guilt, the second track? Yeah, I'll kick this one off. So again, it ha it's got uh, that heaviness to start off right away. Like this song, similar to Count to Zero, kind of just punches you in the face 
with the heaviness, which again, I, I think it's great. I enjoy it. Uh, they kind of have, you know, kind of found that style, at least for these first two songs. I do vary it later. I'll get to that. But um, with this, I think, again, another kind of inspiring song, at least, um, you know, kind of based on what I was picking up, um, you know, that you're kind of still like living through, like kind of, I, I kind of see this song as kind of a little bit, you know, you're still kind of mourning the loss of a you know loved one who's passed, like they're gone, but you're still around kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I do think like the overall theme of this EP, this song does have a, you know, a great spot for it. Cause you know, talk about mourning, and then kind of how the transformation will come with the later songs. I'll get to that as well. Mm-hmm. But definitely a song about mourning and kind of, you know, you're living through uh, each day, but you're still like remembering someone who's close to you who's past. At least that's my take on it. Uh, but overall, great song. I love they got a guitar solo. At, you know, all the guitar solos in this EP, they all shred. They all rock. Like their right. guitarist is phenomenal. I love their solos. But yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what I got for uh, Survivor's Guild. Yeah, Survivor's Guild, I- I'm kind of in the same boat with you. Like, there isn't really a bad song on the EP, uh, especially if you like the heavier and faster stuff that Images does. But, yeah, to me, though, I- I'm with you. It- it's good. It's not going to be, like, the top 10 in their catalog for me, like, as far as a song. But in the context of the album, or of the EP, I think it's fine. Uh, like you said, Carlos, the guitar player for this EP, uh, unfortunately, he's not with them anymore. But uh, he did fine. He, him and Gordon do fine on the guitar work, on the guitar parts and solos. And, you know, it's just, and that's, that's kind of the thing too. Like if anyone is familiar with Images of Eden, they just had, they went on, they went over to Europe last year or so and got in a big deal, only played like four shows on the tour with Wasp because there was some uh, behind the scenes stuff going on and even live stuff, I guess. But uh it kind of it sucked for them because it feels like this album could have been written literally right after this this tour that they went on was because of how aggressive, kind of how ruthless and it is it feels you know just musically, and I think now they did actually today go back over with Soil uh, to Europe to do a little European tour so that that's cool that that's awesome for Images and. They do. They they should be out over in Europe. They're that good, and it's just it's just a shame what happened there last year. But I mean, Survivor's Guilt, man. I, I can't. There's there's not much negative other than what I said. Sometimes it's just too fast and heavy just to say, "Hey, we're fast and heavy here." That's really the only negative I can really bring to this EP. And uh, but Survivor's Guilt, I would say maybe still be the weakest one though. A song on this album or on this EP, in my opinion, I could definitely see that. Again, I I think uh, I think the lyrics are great, but I, I think the the formula of the song is too close to Count to Zero, in my opinion. Yeah, and it, that's kind of going to be some of the negativity for some of these songs. You know, sometimes it's like, yeah, what song am I really on again? Like, there's a couple like two of these, like you said, two, three, maybe that are kind of like, Hey, what song I kind of have to like, look here. Oh, what track am I on? That kind of deal. A hundred percent. Oh yeah. But now moving on to the third song, which is the title track, weathered mm-hmm. and torn crash. Would you like to take that one? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly weathered and torn. Another one of these songs as uh, kind of going through some turbulence in your life and just, Hey, we're here with you. That kind of thing. You're not the only one type deal. Well, Weather and Torn, I, I like uh, Gordon's vocal deliveries on this song as well, and like the chorus and such. Uh, but yeah, I, there's good riffage all the way around, guitar riffage. The band sounds st- still, there's nothing, that, and that, that's kind of weird. Like, like, as far as us saying, hey, this is just heavy, this is just heavy to be heavy and fast to be fast, as a negative context of the album. But there, it's not bad though either. Like it, it's it's weird, kind of like how, how we're kind of describing it. But uh, it, it's certainly. But Weather and Torn is a very good title track, and like I said, guitar works on it is really good. And I, I just think, I, I just kind of think it could have been. There could have been if it was slowed down just a little bit. There could have been a little bit more emotion to this title track in the chorus and such. And there's already some there. 
uh, as far as emotion goes. But I think it, it, it kind of left some on the table too at the same time. Uh, what, what's your, what's your thought here on this track? So this one, I think, um, I think definitely compared to the last two songs, I think this song's a little bit more intense. At least that's kind of the feeling I get when I listen to this one. I think it's just slightly faster than the last two one, last two songs, which I think to its benefit, it, you know, changes that rhythm just a little bit, just enough to make right. it stand out a little bit. I do like they put a news sample with some clips. I believe that is at the two fifteen mark. Right. Yep. Where, yeah, where they're talking about like uh, gun violence and gun control and things like that. So I think it's um, kind of breaks up the song a little bit. Yeah. Um, with that, with that being said, like you kind of really got to pay attention to the lyrics for the news to make the news clips to make sense. So if you're kind of just listening, you're kind of like, oh, okay, this, you know, then it goes into that and kind of jars you a little bit. So if you're paying attention to the lyrics in the song, it, it goes well with mm -hmm. the song. But um, overall, I think. I, I like it. I kind of like the message in there, at least from what I what I kind of gathered is like you know like being there for someone through a difficult time. Also, they kind of you know as I said, they have some news clips in there which people can draw draw their own conclusions with that as well. Mm -hmm. I won't go too much into that, but overall, I think it's it's a great song, and I like that they change it up at least uh, from the last two songs. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The I did forget to mention about the news clips and such. I agree. Uh, it does help break up the song which was needed after these three songs of just heavy and fast. Uh, and another part I wanted to bring up uh, just as the album or as the EP in general, the bass tone in this album, very crunchy, very heavy. I do really enjoy that. Uh, I will say the like on angel born, you hear that a little bit, but it's not so prominent in the mix as far as like crunchy bass tone. And I, I think that kind of works, especially if you want something heavier and faster. I think you do need that what you get here on weather and torn as far as the bass tone but i think it works though too i, I think it works on this but I, I, yeah this is one of the things i forgot to mention from the start because you do hear it in count to zero right from the start you hear that bass crunchy bass tone and you're like oh shit okay here we go but uh but no good points though on weather and torn as well i i agree oh yeah and yes that that bass tone matches you know because again you can have the the guitars are sound amazing but you have to in my opinion you have to have bass and you know they hold the low end down very well uh mm -hmm. with this ep agreed uh, i can't say it better than than what you did right there <laughs> exactly uh, <laughs> that's why that's why we host music shows <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like nothing we haven't talked for like what six months to a year just like that yeah <laughs> exactly exactly so now, to me, though, I think the best songs on this out or this EP, I keep saying album, it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you want to be a stickler about it, I will say EP. <laughs> but, there's going to yeah. be someone in the comments section go, well, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, you, you always get those people. But anyway, on this EP, the last two songs for me, I think, are the best uh, that are the most memorable, in my opinion. Because you do get the slowness of the more melodic stuff in here. So now, track number four, Coexist. Another one, talking about Coexist, everyone needs to coexist, basically. Uh, the short of it, you know, because we're all going through all kinds of stuff politically, you know, civil unrest, everything, economically, everything. And now I will say this is where you're starting to get a little bit more melodicness in the chorus. Everything else, though is heavy and fast like the rest like the first three tracks but i think where they it becomes more memorable is when you start hearing gordon's emotion in the chorus which based it's it's not slow but it's just more of a faster mid-tempo or just mid-tempo st style chorus it switches it up catches your attention gordon vocals certainly grabs your attention goes high you know and i i think you could have put another style coexist song on here and we we might be having a little bit of a different discussion as far as a hey, let's not be so uh, there, there's too much fast and heavy here just to say we're fast and heavy i don't know if that is that kind of what you got here with coexist i think definitely coexist definitely breaks the mold of the last three songs on this ep i think it's a little bit different what i like about it is gordon's vocals you get the clean vocals which yes. uh, sounds amazing, but then like for some of the like uh, lyrics, it's a little bit, it's a little bit dirtier, a little bit growling. 
uh, or maybe not crawling, but a little bit uh, more aggressive, we'll say. And um, lower, so, yeah. Yeah. The lower side of things, yep. Exactly. Um, so I like that kind of that juxtaposition between those two for this song. And definitely, I think this, he has, I, I think at least listening to this, his vocals sound the most, one of the most emotional songs is this one and the next song, which we will get to. Um, but overall, I, I like the, the social, there's a little bit of social commentary in here that you kind of, you really got to kind of pay attention to what he's saying, you know, uh, and he, he actually does say read between the lines and stuff. So in, in the song, so it, to me, at least, uh, I'll touch on it briefly, but, um, you know, it's hard to coexist someone when their values and morals don't really line up with you guys, you know, this, you know with somebody else, it's hard to coexist when they're, you know, they value stuff differently than you do. So at least that's what well, that, that's how I will say it again. If people listen to it, they might have a little bit of a different opinion on that. Which, by the way, listen to the EP then, uh, then you can, you know, yeah. kind of again. He leaves it open ended enough that people can have like kind of differing opinions on it. But right. I do think I agree with what you say with like these last two songs we, we're going to cover. Definitely, definitely stand out more than I think the first half of the EP. Right. I, I'm with you. I agree. That's that's where I'm at too. That's where I'm setting up camp, because once we do get here to the final track, track number five, the dead me, pretty much on the slower side of things. Uh, it, you might be able to argue that it gets the a slower mid tempo feel at, in certain at certain points, but generally speaking, the certainly the slowest track on the on the by far, yeah. Yeah, and I think it worked. Even the first time I heard this uh, EP, I was like, I remember this song. This is a top 10 song for Images of Eden in their whole six album catalog. Uh, it, it, and soon to be seven, actually, which is ex very exciting for all of us Images of Eden fans. But To Dead Me is one that I will play when I go to my Images of Eden catalog. I'm like, the dead me has to be on here somewhere, top 10. And, you know, you, you get the lyrics here. Basically, you, in my view of the lyrics, someone or Gordon, whoever, whoever or you, wh whoever's listening, you die, you, you don't want to be, you die in the, uh, you want to change sense for the better. And you don't want to go back to that life, whether that whether that was like drug abuse, whether that was anything negative, alcoholism, you know, whatever it is, you break that down, and that is the dead you now, because you are once you get over that so new sobriety or whatever the other end of the horrible situation was, you that is the new you. You don't want to go back to that, so you break yourself down build yourself up and that when you come when you look back on that that is the dead you because that's not you no more so that's basically what i get from it and it's very gordon has a good way of portraying the lyrics uh delivering them to you with very catching harmonies you know and just the just the sheer highness of his vocals but also like you said even throughout the EP, the growlness, he does go down in the lower registers as well, switches that up. That is one thing about this album that I, or this EP that I can really say that he does try to switch it up a little bit. I just wish they did it a little bit more is all. And like they did on Angel Born, I think that's why Angel Born from fans and from the band think that's their crown jewel. Like that's their baby uh, in the catalog. And I think that could be a reason why is because there was a good balance and not so much of the heavy and fastness just to say, hey, we're here, we're heavy. And But no, The Dead Me, great. I don't want to say it's a ballad. I, I don't want to say that because I don't really think it is. I wouldn't put that on a ballad playlist per se. But if someone would want to argue that with me or debate that with me, I'd be like, okay, we, I'll beat you halfway with that. But Certainly, of any of the songs on here, in my opinion, the Dead Me is the one that you do have to check out. Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's the most memorable song off this EP, and I, I will say, like, before I dive into it too much, I I wish, like, just from the like the EP listing, you know, the track listing and stuff, I wish they would replace one of the heavier songs with a similar song to like the Dead Me. Mm. I think to kind of balance out, because I I mean, it's cool. Like, I think it's a great way to end the EP. 
But right, I wish they would have yeah. had another song kind of of that slower, you know, kind of that better pacing, at least for them. Uh, I Instead of just going all heavy and then finishing with this one. But, right. you know, that's my kind of well, nitpick. Now, would, would you just maybe put Coexist in the two spot and maybe that would help? Like that, that might solve that issue a little bit? I think it would definitely alleviate it, yeah. Um, okay. right. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit better try because um, four and five are the strongest songs off the CP. And, okay. yeah, I think breaking that up a little bit because, um, like, the first three, again, they kind of sound similar enough that it, it is hard to tell what you're listening to. I know Coexist. I know The Dead Me pretty much right off the bat. Like, I can yeah. tell that they were doing a little bit – something a little bit different with these two songs. Mm-hmm. But with that, I kind of like – the story they kind of tell us, so I get the track listing because, like, Survivor's Guild talk about mourning, coexist, kind of talking about like reading between the lines, you know, like don't don't fall for stuff, you know, you you kind of thinking on your own, and that mm-hmm. kind of leads to the dead me where you start to change, to at least to me, like your mindset, your outlook, you, you drop some bad habits, and I think so. The, the in that sense, the track listing makes sense if you kind of go from that kind of flow. Right. Uh, it kind of comes full circle with the dead me. And I think it's a great, it, it, this is the song to end the EP because it's a phenomenal choice. You're kind of just t- talking about, you know, how, you know, changing don't mourn, you know, don't, don't mourn the dead me. Cause now I, you know, it's a, it's a new me now. I'm, you know, I got a better outlook on life, I've got better mm-hmm. habits with stuff. I'm a better person. And that's what, that's what I really like. And again, this is my favorite. If this is, if I had to pick one song someone has to listen to off the CP, it is The Dead Me. Okay. I, I, yeah, we're in full agreement. And I do agree that this is good to send off the uh, listener on this type of song. I think it works. But yeah, even like you said, even like with the uh, content of the song and of the EP, it kind of does gel there trying to say, hey, we've been through this battle. Even with Angel Born you kind of get that they do have a finishing track on there as well. It's kind of like, okay, take a breath. We've been through this album, this journey together. And, you know, it kind of makes you want to listen to the album again. And same thing with this EP. It makes you kind of like, okay, let's go back and see what we missed maybe. Or, you know, just the the uh, re-listenable wanting to re-listen to this certainly is high once you get to the end of Dead Me then. But no, I, I'm 100% in agreement with you with most of these tracks, really, and most of the EP. So, very good. Yeah, I, I think we're on the same way. Again, like, well, for people who, you know, are li- watching and listening to this, like, we, we, we do this independently. We just happen to, you know, right. kind of pick up on similar things. Since we, we're, well, we're music nerds. We know we're, you know, we, we listen to a lot of music. <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly the nerd part. Yeah, we are, we are music nerds. That's for sure. I don't know. I don't know how else you, you could we could explain that. <laughs> That's why I got in proper word choice. This is why I'm studying communications. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Crash, thank you so much for chatting with me on this uh, Images of Eden album. I'm going to leave some links, obviously, for your show okay. and Images of Eden if anyone wants to listen to it. But before we go, uh, for anyone who uh, they should be familiar with our show, but if we got some new listeners here, uh, what is the Crash Course uh, music uh, metal show? So basically on the Crash Course Metal Show, we bring you all the forgotten, all of the unknown bands from the past, future, and present. And we just try to help promote it. And that's what we do. That's what we love. We do talk about some mainstream stuff of metal. There's no getting around that. But for the most part, what is our desire on our channel uh, and even on yours, we love the forgotten and unknown stuff. I, Me, anyway. And that's what we try to do. We do interviews. We do album reviews. Bring band members on and talk about music, not just their music, but also just metal in general. And we have all kinds of different series, you know, like what you will be on here soon. The, what is metal? We kind of go through a whole kind of n- no questions left on turn in that series. And we just, I don't know. I don't know. We, we just like to do a lot. We like to bring the stuff that's in darkness to the light, to the metal crowd. And that's the unknown and forgotten man. That's, that's what drives me. And that's, that's what i can say about it so thank you man for having me on again of course make sure to uh give a subscribe uh to make sure to subscribe there we go (laughs) (laughs) to the crash course metal show 
But uh, I'll, again, I'll have some links in the description as well. What I really like about your show, you have those conversations, you know, about in the metal community. You, you, you talk to you know, musicians, you talk to fans, you even talk to me sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I talk uh, to everybody, man. Every, everyone <laughs> makes up the metal community. That's the thing. You know, it's not just bands. It's not just, you know, journalists or whatever. Everyone makes it up. And if we want to get back to the glory days of the metal genre, we need everyone involved. It can't be, you know, bipartisan. So exactly that. That's what I love about your show. So as I said, make sure to subscribe, check out all of the great content. As I said, links will be in the description, but crash. Thank you so much for stopping by super cool radio. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on, man. Of course, for crash of the crash course metal show. I'm your host. As always Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. This is super cool radio. And remember stay frosty.